I knew shiplap could be used for some great DIY projects, but I never imagined I could DIY this in just two days. I started with this plain wall. I identified where the studs are and marked those with a piece of green painter's tape. The first thing I did was to create a side frame that came out from the wall. To do this, I cut two by fours to the height of the wall. I cut one piece to go flush against the wall and another at the height of the ceiling, nine and a half inches from the wall. I put these pieces together to create a sturdy frame and added two support boards inside just to help strengthen it. I created two of these frames and then attached them to the stud locations on the wall. I used several long screws to make sure that it was very secure and also used a level to make sure that it was plumb or straight going up the wall. Once both side frames were installed, I moved on to creating a bottom frame. For my measurements, this bottom frame was 50 inches wide and 12 inches high. I put this together with two additional 2x4 pieces as supports on the inside. This fit perfectly inside my two side frames. The next step was to level it. Mine was not level, so I needed to add a shim to the bottom left side so that it would lift the frame a bit while I screwed it into place. I added 2x4s to help create an area larger than this for the fireplace to sit into and attach to. I created one more frame. This was the upper frame. Similarly, it was just 2x4s up to the ceiling. Once that upper frame was put together, I had some help lifting it in place and then secured that with several screws. One other thing I did was to add some 2x4s approximately where I thought the TV would mount. Okay, that was the hard part. Now let's get on to the fun part. I cut shiplap pieces and painted them using a paint sprayer. It's difficult to paint the grooves of shiplap and the sprayer makes that part super easy. The color I used was Sherwin-William Urban Bronze. I started attaching the shiplap from the top. The reason I did this was so that if there's any gap when I get to the bottom, then I can just cover that with baseboard. I used the nail gun to attach it to the wood frame. If you nail it just where the tongue part is, then you cover it with the next board and you won't have any nail holes to cover up later. Of course, now that I say that, I have to show you that it doesn't always work. I had a piece here that was bowed out a little and didn't sit securely enough for me by just nailing it at the tongue piece. So I did add one more nail to secure it toward the top. I'll go over this with a little more paint later and make sure it isn't visible. I continued adding shiplap all around and then, when it came to the fireplace area, I cut out the shiplap a little bit to frame it around the opening. You can do this with a jigsaw or multi-tool. I continued working my way down and I have to admit, I got really lucky that my last piece of shiplap ended exactly on the floor. This was not great measuring or anything I can attribute to myself, I just got really lucky here. I may still add baseboard to it later when I add it to the rest of the wall so that it'll look perfectly built in. The electric fireplace comes with brackets that you attach to the side and then these brackets attach to the shiplap and the 2x4 behind it. From here, I added the decorative rocks and placed the glass cover onto the fireplace. I had someone else add an electrical outlet into my build since this wasn't something I was comfortable doing myself. Trim pieces, these are called the outer corner trim pieces at the hardware store, cover up the edges and make it look professional. And that's it. I turned it on and I was so happy with the way it turned out. This electric fireplace is designed to fit inside a wall so any heat vents forward and the heat can also be turned off so that it's just a light feature. There's of course no actual fire going on here next to a bunch of shiplap and 2x4s. I hope this inspired you to build a cool fireplace insert of your own. Have a dark fireplace that needs a fresh new look? Watch this! Start by taping off the hearth around the fireplace and the firebox. Next, remove the mantle if possible and lay down a drop cloth to protect your floor. After that, fill piping bags with thin set mortar. Then begin piping the mortar into the grooves of the brick. This is much more fun with another set of hands. Remember to pay attention to details and get into all of the grooves for a finished look. Continue this process all the way down to the hearth. Next, begin smudging the mortar around each brick to give it a weathered look. Already looking brighter! Scrape off any excess mortar that got onto the firebox with the putty knife. 
You can avoid this by adding plastic over top when you apply it to the rest of the fireplace. After the fireplace is dry, tape off the firebox. Make sure to cover all of the screens with tape. Next, grab some Rust-Oleum High Heat Ultra Spray Paint in whatever color you want and begin spraying on. After you're done spraying and it's dry, peel the tape right off. Next, add the mantle back on and add some items to personalize the space. Before, this fireplace was dark and outdated and now it's a breath of fresh air for the whole room. This technique would also be great on an outdated brick wall. I hope this inspires you to give this German Schmier technique a try on your outdated fireplace. This pit was several years old and it had begun to show its age. There were no holes, but there was a lot of rust and some dings and dents. I began by sanding off the rust using a heavy grit sanding sponge. These sponges are perfect because you can get in all the nooks and crannies all around the pit. The top mesh was really dented, so I fixed that by gently pushing the mesh back into shape. I used steel wool to remove the rust from the mesh. Once everything was sanded, I washed each piece with plain water. When the pieces were dry, I sprayed them with high heat spray paint. It's really important to use spray paint that says high heat on the can, otherwise your fire pit will catch on fire. Once the fire pit was completed, I needed a space to put the pit on, so I created a little patio. Using 18 by 18 inch landscape blocks, I laid them where I wanted the patio to be and then dug around them. I then removed the blocks and remove the top layer of grass. The patio was on a little slope, so I had to dig it out to make it even. Once the ground was dug out, I added a layer of stone. I raked it even and then tamped it down and made sure everything was level. Once everything was level, I laid the blocks back on top. I continued to check for level after each block was laid, and I added stone under the block if necessary. To finish the patio, I used decorative stone around the edge, which I had left over from another project. Now the pit was ready for some summer fun, which of course means s'mores. I hope this inspires you to create a little space outside your home where you can enjoy being outside all summer long.